It's uh, 4 p.m. UTC, 5 p.m. Central European time. So we are ready to go for this new webinar today, all about visual responsive design. And we are going to have a look together at the recent developments we did for enabling two design applications with responsive behavior right out from the Delphi IDE, right out of the form designer. And of course, as always, without writing a single line of code. Welcome everyone in this uh, new webinar. And um, of course, feel free to ask your questions during this um, webinar. My colleague Peter is also uh, joining us and will also answer your questions. With respect to audio, is everything fine? Um, I do know that when you are running from a Mac, you need to enable audio on our uh, TMS Web Academy URL. That's uh, some kind of protective thing from Apple. And it's a setting uh, from the Safari browser that you can configure. So for Apple people, um, check out your Safari settings and enable the audio. For everyone else, welcome and let's go and let's explore this new development for visual responsive design. And of course, what is the purpose of this uh, responsive design? That is to create user interfaces that adapt to screen size to offer uh, the most convenience, uh, the most uh, or the best user experience, regardless of the screen size. And with visual responsive design, you would do this all without writing code. What did we introduce for you so far to uh, do this, to uh, enable you to do this? Uh, this is, at this moment, two components. And one of them is the TTMS FNC Responsive Manager, and this component is available in TMS FNC Core. And the other one, which is actually um, exactly the same one, but we also made it accessible for users who have um, the TMS VCL UI pack, and that is the TADV Responsive Manager component. What I'm showing you today, what I'm telling you today, Everything is applicable to uh, both components. Only difference, of course, with FNC is that the FNC version, the TMS FNC Responsive Manager, this one will work in classic VCL Windows applications. It will work on all the targets that the FireMonkey framework is supporting. So obviously Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android, Linux, and FNC also supports a web client application development with TMS Web Core. So also from TMS Web Core, you can use the FNC Responsive Manager component. It's everywhere the same concept, the same mechanism, same approach. So uh, what I'm showing you here will apply to um, all these frameworks and all these targets. So what are the obvious use cases for uh, wanting to have responsive design in your applications? Um, this all started actually, this, this wave of design methods started from web development, uh, specifically because a web application, of course, is accessible from uh, various um, devices. Uh, various devices with different screen sizes. So it's an initiative that uh, has its roots in web development where it was desirable to have a website layout that was different, for example, on a smartphone from a tablet, from a desktop PC, but it's equally applicable to um, creating, for example, native applications with FireMonkey running on mobile devices um, as well as on uh, desktop devices where it can also be desirable to have a different layout to accommodate for screen size on um, 
mobile smartphone or uh, desktop etc and even on windows of course um, it can also be desirable to adapt your screen layout and specifics of um, how the application looks and feels depending on the size of the window that the user is using on his desktop screen and maybe you have uh, still other ids or other um, other things that you want to achieve with uh, something uh, like responsive design that enables this so how did we uh, manage to uh, give you this uh, approach for responsive design in a visual way from the Delphi IDE that is uh, offered via a non-visual component. As I said, in FNC, it is called TMS FNC Responsive Manager. When you use this component as a TMS VCL UI pack user, it will be called ADV Responsive Manager, but the properties are 100% identical. So very important here is that, of course, uh, things are accessible through the um, properties of the non-visual component, but also important is um, that there is a context menu that gives you uh, various functionalities that you can use right out of the IDE form designer. But we will have a look at these in detail. And for that, let's switch to the Delphi IDE and explore these things in detail. So here is my uh, Delphi IDE. And when I add here responsive manager, you can see that I have here uh, both VCL UI pack installed and FNC UI pack. So I have both components available. One is sufficient, of course and let's drop it on the form and explore what is available. Um, maybe the first thing to uh, pay attention to is the control property. And as you can see, you can select the control. If I would drop a panel on the form, and we'll use this panel in this demo anyway with top alignment but when i dropped this panel on the form you can see that i can also select a panel as control we'll use the form in this uh, example um, but important is that you can select a control and uh, the control actually determines on which uh, control the responsive behavior will be applied and will be managed. That means that when you select form, obviously um, the responsive behavior will apply to the entire form and all the controls that are on this form. But you can equally choose to only have a certain part of your form, for example, a panel that hosts uh, other child controls, you can also choose to have the responsive behavior apply only on a specific part, for example, a panel. Imagine that you have a panel uh, with some splitter controls and the panel can change size during uh, application execution. Um, that means that you could, within um, the boundaries of this panel, also define a responsive behavior. But let's focus in this uh, demo on a uh, responsive behavior that we define at form level. What more do we have? Um, I will um, here now uh, inform what the auto load on resize uh, means. That means that actually the non-visual component, the TMS FNC responsive manager will automatically apply the right state of your form depending on the size of the form so you don't have to add any code when the form size changes then um, the responsive manager will apply the proper desired state for the specific size that the form has so when you have that check to true which is the default setting um, no code to write changing the form size will uh, trigger the um, responsive manager automatically to change to uh, 
choose or select the uh, desired state. Talking about states, these uh, states are managed by a collection of states. Now, by default, this collection is empty and it is via the context menu that I can choose to um, create new states. So I can select here, save this specific state of my form in a new state. And now you can see that I have in my collection already one state and this state applies to form sizes with a width of 335 pixels and a height of three, uh, 234 pixels. So uh, this is how I can create um, different states from the uh, component context menu in the form designer. I think it will become clear when I um, create a somewhat more extensive example. So let's create now together an example where I have in this uh, small form uh, size a panel that is top aligned and here we will add an ADV edit component. So that is an edit control from the VCL UI pack. And I'm choosing this specific edit control because this edit control has an extra feature, which is that I can um, have a label that is attached to this um, edit control. So when I want this label, I use the label caption property and let's make this the username here for the first edit control and the password for the second edit control like this. Now this could be our, let's say, ideal desired layout for when our user prefers to use our application with a small uh, window. And what I will do is in this small state, I persist this uh, state via the context menu. So we have now one state for this one small form size. Imagine that the, we, we uh, want an uh, other layout for when the form is somewhat larger. What we can do, for example, is uh, make, in this case, this panel left aligned. And then it would be actually desirable that the label for our edit control is rather uh, top aligned versus this uh, edit control. And we can choose this from the uh, label position property on this ADV edit control, and then we can make it look like this. So we set them both to uh, top left alignment, and then our user interface looks like this when the user selects a form size, has a form size like this. So what I can do is save this to yet another state. So this could be called the medium size state of our form. Let's make the form somewhat larger. And when there is a larger form, we can maybe make this side panel somewhat wider because there is in this client area sufficient space. And as I have more space in my sidebar, I can again make the uh, label sit on the left side of my edit control and I can change it um, with the property this way. And let's save this to yet another state. So when I look at the state um, context menu, I can see that I have three states now and I see the same thing here, the active state, which is at this moment state number three. And from here, I can also already immediately change um, the state and with my changing the state, also the form designer automatically updates and shows it as it is. Now these uh, states are called state one, state two, state three, which are the default uh, names, but nothing prevents me to give this a more um, familiar name 
And so the first one, we can call it small state. Second one, we can call it medium state. And then we would have here the large state. As I change the names of the states, you see that in my property for active state, this automatically changed to these more meaningful names for states. If we inspect in this uh, collection with the states, um, here you can see um, also the property constraint. And constraint is what will determine what state will be chosen for what form size. And it is this, in this case, the constraint is the width and the height. And so you can see if I select another state, I have another constraint width and a constraint height. And the same applies for the large state. What I also have here in my context menu is a preview um, command. And here I can immediately do a live preview of the responsive behavior without compiling the code, but I can immediately see the responsive behavior right out of the IDE. And you can see here at the top of the form, um, you can see a bar and that bar indicates the different states that um, are more precisely the width at which um, width the state will change. So in this area, I have the large state. You can see when I'm crossing from the medium state to the large state that my left panel layout is already changing. And when I go to the small state, you can see that it adapts and shows um, the panel top aligned. So this is um, a preview, a live preview of uh, the responsive behavior that you have at design time. So when I run this application, obviously um, I will have the same behavior at runtime. So let's compile this uh, application. And here we have it uh, running. And when I now resize my application, you can see that depending on the form size, my layout of the screen adapts. And all that without writing a single line of code. And so uh, now, as you could see, we have here changed alignment of a panel. We have changed positions of edit controls. We have also changed uh, properties of uh, the label position, for example. Actually, I can uh, change any published property between different states, whether this is a color or a font, font size, all these kind of things. Um, everything that is different between states, uh, all the differences will be applied when I change from one state to another state. Now, if we um, dive into this uh, a little bit more uh, technical, let's have a look at what happens in the form designer. And that will reveal the technical mechanism that is behind this visual responsive design. So you can see here um, in the form designer, the DFM file, the non-visual responsive manager component. And here you can see the content of the collection that holds um, all the states. And we can see here what is in the small state. And here the medium state. And here we also have the large state. So uh, it immediately becomes clear that in the state we have um, all published properties of the controls on the form persisted via JSON. Um, and the responsive manager will handle by itself uh, to apply all the differences between properties uh, between these different states. Now, you might wonder, okay, um, this is quite uh, an amount of data that is persisted in the DFM file, which is correct. It persists by default, all this information. But there is um, 
if that bothers you for some reason, for the reason of size, for example, there is the optimize option that you can select from the context menu. When I choose optimize, it will actually change the um, content of the JSON. And as you can see, this has now a significantly reduced amount of uh, settings. And these are actually only these settings that are really different between the three states. And as you can see, this is um, significantly reduced from uh, the default information. And of course, when I run this application, and I think, uh, I think this is now because I did not save this uh, project, I better save it to make it run again. So let's save this uh, in some folder. It is confusing with units, units that I, test units that I had already created previously, but let's save it. Everything should normally know. I must have done something wrong. I'm not sure what, uh, let's close this, save this. And here in this folder, no. Well, I can open a project that I previously created to save time here. Here we have the same um, application that was already saved here. We have the large amount of um, information in the DFM file. I choose to optimize, I say yes, and then we compile and run the application. Then of course you see the exact same behavior. When I resize my form, you see the same responsive design applied. Actually, technically, even when you have in the DFM file all the information from the different states stored, automatically upon application startup, the responsive manager will be smart enough to figure out the property differences between the different states and only apply these uh, differences. So this was a look at the responsive behavior from the perspective of a um, VCL application. We can do exactly the same in a FireMonkey application, where we, which will, we will do later on. But I explained that we can also uh, use the responsive manager from a web core web client application. So that's what I'm doing now, create a new TMS web core application and let's save this right away. And I will save this uh, here in my folder for this webinar, responsive. And here we it's the web example project. And let's save all the files involved. Okay, we are ready to go. And so here we also have the FNC responsive manager, the non visual component that we can use within a web core web client application. And we can do something similar by dropping a panel on the form and make this top aligned. Let's hide the caption and drop some edit controls on it. Like this. You will save some time by skipping the labels in this uh, example. So this could be uh, the small state for our application. For example, when it's running 
on a mobile phone. I save this to the first state, and when it is larger, then we apply the same. We make this left aligned and put the edit controls like this. Save this to a new state, a somewhat larger state, and when the form is really big, we could, for example, make this panel somewhat more white and save this as a large state, a third state, a large state. And also here, of course, I can, at design time, change between states, um, modify properties in this state, etc. Notice that when I have this auto save property to true, when I make a change, for example, um, uh, let's move this somewhat more to the left, and then I change here to state number two, and we go back to state number one, you can see that the auto save true property caused that the change that I applied to the position of the edit was automatically persisted in the state manager. So now let's run this um, web core web client application. So it gets compiled to a JavaScript application running in the browser. It will start our browser and run the application in the browser, of course. So it got compiled. It always shows it on the secondary screen, but here is um, this application. And as you can see, uh, in this specific state, I have my panel on the left side. And when I reduce the size, uh, then you can see I could not reduce it sufficiently to um, make it appear as if it is a mobile device. But um, <coughs> when I um, open the browser console, you can see that um, I can choose here different uh, mobile devices. And here you can see that um, in this case, I have this small uh, design. And I should be able, okay, here I can rotate the do as if or simulate a rotation of the mobile device. And so you can see that as I rotate the mobile device, this is how this web client application will behave when you rotate your smartphone and look at it um, uh, in portrait or in landscape mode. Let's um, also explore before we uh, dive into some slightly different uh, things that we can do with the responsive manager. Uh, let's have a look at some more extensive example that took some more time to prepare. That's why we are not doing this live, but use something that is already prepared. And then I pick from the VCL U IPAC this demo that is available when you use uh, the latest version of the VCL UI pack in this folder responsive manager. You can see here this uh, non-visual component. And here we have uh, somewhat similar. We have uh, our panel sitting on the top. Here we have a paint box and we have here ADV glow buttons, highly configurable VCL buttons where you can specify where the caption sits, uh, various types of um, images. Here we use uh, SVG images, for example, uh, as uh, images in the controls. And when I switch at design time between the states, you can see that I have um, five different states in this uh, example. You can see that when I switch the state, now my panel is left aligned, but I still have small buttons. When I choose state three for a somewhat larger screen, I have now my buttons uh, with caption included somewhat uh, wider and state four is still somewhat larger screen. Obviously at first sight, no 
uh, change uh, in other uh, characteristics, but there are changes. And uh, let me show them to you, what we did here in this example. Let's have a look at the pain box. You can see that we used for this pain box the tag property. And here in this specific state, the tag property is set to three. When we change now to state four and inspect the tag property for the pain box, we can see four. And when we um, change to state number five, um, and also there, inspect the tag property, you can see that it has a value of five. So what are we doing with this uh, tag property? We are actually here, there is some code, and it is code that will draw um, images in this pane box with a different number of columns. So the, the sole reason for having this pane box is to show you that when you have other controls that adapt to uh, specific property settings, here in this case, uh, the tag property, um, what I'm doing here is use this uh, tag property to um, control painting of images uh, in um, a configurable number of columns. It becomes clear when I run this application And so when it starts, it has the size that was used in the form designer. So in state five, and you can see that I have five columns here. When I now reduce uh, the size, the tag property will uh, switch between five, four, and three. And you can see that the paint box paints uh, accordingly. When I still make it smaller, you can see that it switches between the um, small button size and large button size and when i make it even smaller you can see that it um, switches to the top aligned panel layout so this is a somewhat more extensive example for using the responsive manager now we can do more with this uh, responsive manager and let me show you this in um, the following example. Here we have an uh, application and let's inspect the states of this application. We see here that we have two states. We have the admin state and the normal state. I can, of course, change uh, the active state, which is no, now the normal state, to admin state and normal state again. No obvious change so far. This is because there are actually properties changing, but they are just properties that have no visual effect in the form designer. Um, if we have a look at the properties for this uh, salary edit control, you can see that the visible state here is false. When I change to uh, admin mode, you can see that the visible property for this edit control is true. So what we do here is actually choosing a different type of constraint. And with this type of constraint, I can, in this example, control a layout of the application that is different depending whether you use the application in administrator mode or in a normal user mode. It becomes clear when I do the, uh, well, for obviously for the preview that will not work because it is code that will uh, determine in what state I set the form. So. Therefore, I also did set the auto load on resize to false because in this specific case, I do not want the size of the form to affect the selection of the proper state of my form. No, in this case, I want it. Uh, I want to have it under my own control and um, use either the admin mode or the normal mode. And I do this from clicking on the checkbox 
that switches between this admin mode and the normal user mode. So what I'm doing here is uh, call responsive manager dot load state. So I'm programmatically loading some specific state here with a Boolean value, the Boolean value of the checked state of my checkbox. And this is configured in the constraints of the two states that I define. So when I open up the collection editor for the states, you can see that in the admin mode, the Boolean value here is true. And in the normal mode, the Boolean value is false. So this is a simple on off kind uh, mechanism to select between two states. Uh, you can see here that there is also a constraint of the type uh, number value and also one of the type string value that allows you to define multiple states with uh, all different values and um, also you can see here when you uh, inspect the uh, auto completion for the load states call uh, that there are three overloads that allow you to load the state based on a boolean value based on a string value and based on a number value and so this is a mechanism that you can use to manage different states and uh, perform your selection of your desired state uh, depending on different data types. So here, my application started up in normal mode. And as it is in normal mode, uh, the salary here for some specific uh, person is not visible. And the button to change the salary, for example, is disabled. When I would run this application in admin mode, then you can see that the salary um, edit control becomes visible and my update button also becomes enabled. So this is the same responsive manager that is used for another purpose, that is to manage uh, different uh, behavior of your application, but again, uh, doing everything at uh, design time in the form designer in a visual way uh, and without writing any code other than of course controlling of uh, which state that you want to use and there is another final example that i prepared for this um, webinar which shows you uh, yet another way to use a uh, responsive manager for, and that is in the context of uh, multi-language support. Notice that here in this example application, um, I have a FireMonkey application. So again, same component, it's FNC. So it's accessible, available on every framework. So also in FireMonkey. And I could compile this FireMonkey application with this FNC component to all the supported targets. But here for the convenience, of course, we are sticking to the Windows target. So what I have here is a button in the form. And this button has the caption butterfly. And there is something special about butterfly. Um, that is butterfly in different languages is surprisingly in every different language a completely different word um, so um, let's explore um, what the different meanings are for butterfly in different languages and as the word in different languages also has a different size uh, it can be desirable uh, to, for example, here in this case, adapt the width of the button to ensure that um, the word for butterfly is nicely visible in the button, regardless of the language. And so I prepared for this example, uh, five states. And uh, we have the states for Dutch, English, French, German, and Spanish. So when I switch to Dutch, you can see that uh, it changed to um, the proper word for butterfly in Dutch. 
completely different from the English word. When I switch to French, you can see that the button width increased slightly to fit um, the French word for it, papillon. And the German word is also completely different and much longer. So the button width, uh, width increased. In German, of course, uh, butterfly is a schmetterling. And also Spanish, again, a completely different word, so different button size as well. And in Spanish, it is called mariposa. Now, um, you can see that I could switch this, uh, these states here um, at design time. Um, what I did to change the states at runtime is adding a combo box. And this combo box is filled with the uh, languages that we want to switch between. And we have the combo box on change event. And what you can see here is, let's pick the chosen language and let's load the specific state for this uh, language via the responsive manager. And there, I also have to clarify that in the different states in my states collection, I did set the constraint with the proper name for each state. So this is the French state, the Dutch state, English state, German state, and Spanish state. So you can see that the constraint string value in this case, I could actually also have chosen a number, but of course, uh, using uh, the text is more meaningful. And so when I run the application, Let's see how this behaves live. And so here is my Fire Monkey application running on Windows. It started with uh, English because I did set my combo box selected value to the value of uh, English. And uh, when I change it via the combo box, you can see that it adapts properly and it also, of course, changes the size of the button. So this is um, yet another use case for the responsive manager. Um, internally, the team here um, is also reflecting on accommodating the behavior of such a state manager even more specific to uh, multi-language support that could be in the future um, something descending from this uh, state manager, but um, even more oriented or targeted at multi-language support. But as you can see here from this demo, uh, this already perfectly accommodates to um, building an example with multi-language support and the, the typical or specific behavior that of course in different languages, the text size is always different and that it is desirable to um, accommodate controls to uh, the text that it needs to show on the screen. So this was in a nutshell what the uh, responsive manager can do for you and how it allows you to um, have responsive behavior in your applications without writing any line of code. So. To summarize, um, this is available for you for VCL applications, either via the VCL UI pack or via the FNC core component. It's available for FireMonkey applications. So you can also uh, use this to create different layouts for your applications when they are running in portrait mode or in landscape mode. And this is available via um, the FNC component in the FNC core um, package. For WebCore, at this moment, it is also available as you can use any FNC control in WebCore. You can also use the FNC core, FNC responsive manager um, component in a WebCore application. And these are uh, the bundles where uh, this uh, responsive manager FNC or VCL is available in. 
and in terms of uh, IDEs that are supported. At uh, this moment, we are supporting from Delphi XC7 to uh, Red Studio, the latest one, 11.2. So all these IDEs have you covered. And that uh, brings us to the questions and uh, the answers session or part of the session. So I see that um, there are already quite a number of uh, questions in the chat box of um, the webinar that my uh, colleague, that was not yet the purpose, that my colleague uh, Peter also handled. So um, for uh, those of you um, who will view the replay later, let's go all over these uh, questions. Okay, so the first question was, what with respect to LCL? LCL is the framework that is available under the Lazarus IDE. At this moment, we do not yet have LCL support. There are some technical limitations, issues that we are still fighting with. Not sure what the outcome of this fight will be. Um, if we can win the battle, it will become available uh, otherwise, we'll see what happens. Um, another question is uh, Win32 versus Win64. Um, well, our FNC responsive manager, but also the VCL ADV responsive manager will work both fine in a Win32 application and a Win64 application. And the same applies for uh, FireMonkey applications. It will run it will compile and run on all the targets that are supported by the framework. I'm going over um, more questions. And here I see a question in connection with um, WebCore running from Visual Studio Code. Um, so it is an uh, FNC component. FNC components do um, work in um, um, WebCore for Visual Studio Code. So um, it is also expected that we support uh, Visual Studio Code. The only small difference here, well, it's not, maybe not that small, but the clear difference is that um, this involves quite some design time behavior. Um, and that means that we also need to ensure that the design time behavior uh, will be all um, implemented also on Visual Studio Code, but that is definitely the intention to do that. I see a remark in the questions uh, regarding um, VCL versus FMX. Uh, well, as you have seen, uh, the component works identical in FMX. So the FNC component can be used in uh, both scenarios. And here I have a question. Is it only about the position and the visibility of controls? It is actually about any published property. So if you want to change colors and have in a small state different colors, different label positions, um, whatever, uh, it could also be, for example, uh, different uh, column widths in a grid. Uh, that is also a, a property that can change between uh, states. Um, so any published property actually will be handled by the responsive manager. Um, can I save and load responsive settings from a file? Um, yes, also that is uh, possible. Um, because actually the responsive manager technically underlying um, is built upon persistence in JSON. Actually, FNC Core has already extensive support for uh, persisting uh, components in JSON. And that was, of course, what we took advantage of in the responsive manager. But if you have a preference to do this by yourself, you can actually already do this out of the box with um, FNC core. <coughs> I'm going 
going uh, over further questions. I see here, uh, referring also to the case with the splitter that I um, brought up in the beginning. Um, what I showed in the beginning is that, okay, here in this example, we have used the entire form for which the responsive behavior is defined, but the responsive manager can be told to be restricted to some specific control on the form. Um, and so if, for example, you put a panel on the form, you connect the uh, responsive manager to this panel specifically, and then your panel resizes via a splitter, you can um, define the responsive behavior within this panel that is changing size at runtime via the splitter um, and define the responsive behavior via the responsive manager. So you can either entirely um, make it work on your form, but also in specific areas only. Uh, you could also add two responsive manager components on the form <coughs> and have um, um, one responsive manager work on one panel and another responsive manager on another panel. I see another question. Can the manager also be used with FNC maps? FNC maps is a control like any other uh, control on the form. So um, it will also work uh, with the FNC maps uh, component. Uh, some question here in connection with uh, people who are already playing with the component uh, right now. And that question is in connection with TNS WebCore. Um, for WebCore specifically, uh, you have seen here in this webinar that it works out of the box with WebCore. The only thing is that internally we had to do some small change to make it work this way out of the box in WebCore. And that change that we did will be included in the upcoming WebCore release. But you can work around um, the out of the box behavior that is in the current release of WebCore and that is by assigning uh, the control property at runtime. So for example, in the form create, you would leave the control property to unassigned in the form designer and in your form constructor, simply set responsive manager.control to um, the form uh, that you want to use to have responsive behavior applied on. There is um, one important remark here, and that is um, high DPI. Um, the responsive manager will work fine in um, scenarios where um, the DPI changes. For example, in a multi-monitor scenario with different DPI, the responsive manager will do the proper calculations uh, for determining where to change uh, between states. Um, it is recommended to use that with the latest version of Delphi as this has the, let's call it the most improved high DPI handling version of uh, Delphi 11.2. Um, there is one uh, thing that you should be aware of that at least at this moment um, keep the form designer in a fixed DPI setting. You know that in Delphi uh, 11 it was possible to switch the DPI level and design time for the form designer uh, between the default 96 DPI or adapt to the screen uh, DPI. Um, it is recommended at this moment um, to just keep um, the form designer always in the same DPI. If you will switch uh, along your development, the DPI at design time, uh, that will affect the responsive manager. So as long as you stick to the same DPI, you will be fine. And of course, at runtime, it will uh, take uh, the DPI in account. I'm looking at uh, further questions. Um, uh, 
I see a question regarding uh, switching between what I understand as uh, regular menus and um, three bars pop up menu on smaller screens. Um, you could, for example, create full menus uh, and toggle for, for large screens and then just toggle the visibility of these uh, menu items when you would run on smaller screens and then make the menu items uh, accessible in another way. Uh, so um, again, here, all the published properties of the team menu item um, are uh, handled by the responsive manager, manager. So if you toggle settings in between these, uh, is this uh, will switch nicely between uh, states. And then, um, is there a way to integrate your admin example of the responsive manager with TMS Sphinx from this login with admin rights? Um, I guess that should be uh, fairly easy to do. You add the responsive manager component on the uh, specific Sphinx uh, demo. And then um, basically you define an admin um, state and a normal user state. And when uh, after your Sphinx based login, you um, determine that you are running in admin mode, you set the uh, state for admin state. If not, you set the state for normal user state. So that should be fairly easy to um, use the responsive manager to uh, deal with that all without writing much code as opposed to uh, the example as it is now. Um, another question is when will this be available? So in the FNC UI pack, it is available from today, the release version. It was for a while for all access users um, available as a beta version. Um, but from today, it is for FNC UI pack uh, users also available in the release version of uh, FNC core. Um, and it can obviously, as it is included in FNC core, it can be used in connection with all the components, visual controls from the FNC UI pack, from the FNC dashboard pack, um, from FNC maps. It can be used in connection with all these uh, different FNC components. But the FNC core component can also be used in connection with uh, standard VCL components. Uh, it can be used in uh, web core um, everywhere, in fact. And we are working hard to um, also bring the VCL specific version in the VCL UI pack. So expect an update for that shortly, uh, when possible, even uh, later today or uh, latest tomorrow. And that will also be the release version available there. And if there are no more questions, I see no more questions at this moment. Um, if there are no more questions, I want to make you aware of yet another thing that we did today. And today we launched um, our redesigned Instagram page and all the work that we did on uh, redesigning our Instagram page will then also be um, applied to our other social media. But at this moment, you can already get the latest of this uh, redesign via our Instagram. So um, if you are an Instagram user or you want to enter into the, let's say, dynamic world of Instagram, uh, go there and uh, of course, follow us. Follow us also because if you follow us, you will see uh, the stories um, bringing you the latest news of what is happening here. And then um, I see another question coming in. So basically, if the design of your web app is not overly spacey, you can from now on develop without HTML, CSS and have the responsive design that is uh, actually correct. So uh, again, here, um, I think this is a principle that is really close to our heart. 
that is freedom of choice. Of course, if you use an HTML template and you use um, the media queries to define in the HTML template your responsive behavior, that is perfectly fine and that will continue to work. But um, if you rather uh, use a visual approach and do your design already in uh, design time and also believe that you can do much more fine-grained control with the responsive um, manager than uh, I think quite elaborative work that you would have to do with uh, media queries. So uh, indeed, uh, you can use the responsive manager in web applications uh, and do everything visually from your form designer. For now, I see no more questions. So that means um, it's about one hour sharp. So that's uh, good with respect to timing. I want to thank you for uh, being here, for thank you for spending your valuable time in this uh, webinar. I hope you enjoyed it. Of course, our team uh, keeps in touch when you uh, start working with the responsive manager component. We are eagerly awaiting your uh, feedback. We want to see what kind of great applications you do with uh, Delphi, inform us about exciting developments. And of course, if you have um, further ideas, uh, if you see uh, more valuable things to add, uh, we are listening, you know where to find us. Um, thank you for being here and um, I hope to see you on an upcoming webinar. And uh, meanwhile, have a nice day until the next time. Thank you and bye-bye.